what's up you guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here welcome my name is Disa Drumane and I make videos about motherhood lifestyle and fitness in today's video I'm going to be chatting all things gentle parenting which is a hot topic in the parenting world and let's dive right into it let's start off by discussing what exactly is gentle parenting so before i begin i just want to put a disclaimer out to say this is not a video to make you feel bad about the way that you parent this is a video to discuss something that i'm often asked in my dms on instagram um so i thought that you know i would bring this information together in a video on my channel so that if i keep getting the questions about gentle parenting and people wanting to find out more i can direct them to this video this is not a video bashing anybody about the way that they parent this is the way that we parent myself and my son's father choose to parent this way it is also known as positive discipline so let's get into it what is gentle parenting gentle parenting is a long-term approach to to discipline that respects the child and views the child as a whole person so let's break down that definition it respects the child let's pause there it respects the child which to me is so important I need to model to my son what respect looks like um, I don't just you know rule by an iron fist because this is my house and my rules and you're the child and I'm the parent because to me that dictates to him or tells him that authority figures can be abusive towards you just because they are the authority figure um, me respecting my child models to him that me as the authority figure i don't abuse my power because um, i'm in a position of power and he is not um, because i'm older than him and he is younger because he is just a child and doesn't know better and i'm the parent and i know better like those are not the things that i'm about i'm about speaking to each other respectfully um, and me speaking to him respectfully teaches him to speak to me respectfully isn't that so the second part of the definition that i gave for gentle parenting is that it is a long-term approach so instead of focusing on getting him just getting him to do as i say because i said so or because i'm the parent i'm focusing on a long-term approach not just getting results right now in the moment when i need him to I don't know put his shoes on he can't even put his shoes on by himself right now I help him but you know for example if he was old enough to put his shoes on and we're running late for school and I'm just like just put your shoes on you knew that today's a school day blah 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 um, yes I will get him to do what is right right now but it's not necessarily because he's doing it out of the goodness of his heart he's doing it because he's probably scared that I'm yelling at him um, so that's what I love it is a long-term approach not just focusing on right now and so lastly the thing the other thing that I noticed in my definition that I gave in the beginning about what gentle parenting is is that it sees the child as a whole person a whole human being y'all <laughs> isn't that just mind-blowing um, so if I'm gentle parenting it means I see my child as a whole person, which means he's not an extension of me, you know? Um, that just, I love that. He's not an extension of me. He is an individual, which means he's going to have thoughts of his own. That's so great. He's going to have opinions that might oppose mine. He may live a lifestyle that is different to mine and I definitely welcome that. I want him to know that his differences are welcome, his mistakes are welcome. Him being himself, which is an individual, is very welcome. Another thing about gentle parenting is that it values the child's feelings. One of the pillars of gentle parenting is to empathize with your child, you know, to empathize with his feelings. So for example, let's say Zion is upset about something instead of being like stop crying or um, one of the other things that we used to get so go to your room and you know fix yourself 
until you're done crying you can come out I want him to know that your feelings are welcome I, I see that you're upset I see that you're angry um, do you need a hug it's okay to be angry so I'm empathizing with his feelings I'm letting him know that whatever feelings you are having it's okay to be angry I can even tell him that I get angry too sometimes you know I'm normalizing the fact that it's normal how you're feeling is normal for me valuing my child's feelings um, it will later on help them to regulate their emotions which is something that's so important because as adults you know when if you grew up in a home that was not welcoming of your feelings or made you feel stupid for feeling however you were feeling or sort of just like hide your feelings nobody wants to see you cry stop crying um you grow up not knowing how to deal with it you know you grow up not knowing how to deal with your feelings which could in turn look like you having rage or i don't know hitting people being physically abusive towards other people so empathizing with my child and helping him to you know come down from a state of being super angry into a state of just being um, will come in handy later on in his life earlier on in the video I mentioned um, gentle parenting being about respecting your child and that is for me it's important to respect my child because it teaches him that kindness starts at home I cannot expect that my child is going to be respectful or kind to the kids at school but he's not seeing kindness being modeled for him at, at home so you know a lot of people say that your parent your kids don't do as you say they do as you do so if I'm not modeling respect for him at home how can I expect that he's gonna go to school and respect his teachers and respect the other kids and not be bullying the other kids and not be shoving them around at the playground how can I expect that another um, I want to say a pillar of gentle parenting is that it uses positive words over fear and punishment so instead of trying to instill fear into my child um, I want to use positive words you know I want to encourage him encourage the behavior that I want to see right yes that's exactly what i wanted to say instead of using fear i want to use my words to encourage the behavior that i want to see um there is a lady that i follow on tiktok i think her tiktok handle is high impact club and i think she's got two kids and she was at the doctor's office and her one child was sitting really nicely on the chair and the other one was not and instead of you know shouting or whatever the child wasn't sitting nicely she just simply told the the one you know that thank you for sitting so nicely blah 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 and this one overheard and sat nicely you know so that's something that i definitely want to do is instead of instead of trying to instill fear in my child you know be him be scared of me and out of him being scared of me he's going to behave the way that maybe I want him to behave I want to encourage him to behave that I want to, the way that I would like him to behave um, and that's definitely not what was taught to me uh, my parents were super strict they definitely use a lot of fear um, one example of that would be when I was given a sex talk and it sort of went like what you see on Mean Girls if you watch Mean Girls you know you're gonna get pregnant and you're gonna die if you have sex you're gonna get pregnant and you're gonna die and for me it wasn't you're gonna die it was if you have sex you're gonna get pregnant and I'm going to disown you so imagine how that feels or that felt to 12 year old me that was just minding her own business and I get told that if I have sex and get pregnant my sense of security is going to be taken away from me or sense of safety my safety my home my family Going to be taken away from me so imagine what that does to a child you know a 12 year old is a child i was a child and um yes i understand that maybe the logic behind trying to use fear is that they will behave in the way that i want them to behave but it definitely it did 
make them think I was behaving the way that they wanted me to behave, but it also made me really good at covering things up. It made me really good at being sneaky. It made me really good at lying. So, I don't know, for short term gains, yes, to them, when they looked at me, they were like, oh girl, home girl is on the straight and narrow. That's a short term gain. But long term, I didn't trust them. I didn't trust them about my mistakes. I didn't feel safe. Now I mentioned that gentle parenting doesn't use fear and doesn't use punishment, which means I don't punish my child. Um, the biggest form of punishment for me as growing up was hidings and electronics being taken away. Um, so instead of punishment, I let natural consequences take their place. So, for example, recently he's had this thing of throwing his toys and particularly this wooden shaped sorter. That wooden shaped sorter is heavy, okay? So if it smacked me in the face, I would probably get a blue eye. So he does this often before bed. He will throw the toy and I will give him a warning. I will say to him, Zion, can you please stop throwing your shaped sorter because it is going to hurt you or hurt somebody else. If you don't stop throwing the shape sorter, I'm gonna to have to put it away and we can play with it again tomorrow. And he looks at me and I don't know if he understands because he's 16 months old and throws the shape sorter again. And then I say to him, thank you very much. I'm going to take your shape sorter and put it wherever he can't reach for it. Um, and that's it there's no discussions i don't bargain with him again because i did give him a warning the first time of course he's going to cry about it of course he's going to be upset um and then i get down to his level and explain to him that i'm sorry that you're feeling this way um i would be sad too if my favorite toy got taken away from me but we can play with the shape sorter tomorrow Here's a ball that you can throw instead. And immediately he's quiet and throwing the ball happily. It's a tiny little ball. It's not going to break anything if he throws it. But he, he is, I'm not shaming him. Um, I'm not threatening him. Um, everybody feels good at the end of the day and he knows his options you can't throw the shape sorter but you can throw this ball and in fact that taught him a new word ball <laughs> so now that we know what gentle parenting is let's look at what gentle parenting is not firstly people a lot of people think that gentle parenting is just permissive i just allow my child to run amok i just let him do whatever he wants it is not gentle parenting has very firm boundaries and oh girl over here has is the boundary queen okay from being a people pleaser to now being currently being a recovering people pleaser my boundaries do not waver zion does not get what he wants because he's upset for example the the shape sorter story if he gets upset that i took his shape sorter away he's allowed to be upset However, I'm not going to give it back to him just because he's crying because that number one tells him that I'm not going to follow through with my boundary setting and number two that he can cry to get his way. Gentle parenting is not snowplow parenting. Just because I treat my child as a whole human, I speak to him respectfully does not mean that I'm the problem solver. I'm not here to snow plow and make sure that there are no problems in his life and that life is a breeze. I let natural consequences take place that are age appropriate. Of course, if his safety is in danger, then I will immediately intervene. If I see my child, for example, standing on the ledge of the balcony about to jump down, I'm not going to just allow that, you know, once again being permissive. I'm not going to just allow that. Um, but I'm also not the problem solver. Um, an example of this that I can think of, he's not at this stage yet, but a lot of kids, when I was an OP, the kids would always say to me, 
D, I'm bored, which tells me that little man is wanting me to solve the problem that he's bored. Um, all right, big boy, I see that you're bored. What do you think that you can do about that? You know, or I, I know you're telling me that you're bored because you think that I can solve that problem. How about you tell me how you can solve that problem? I'm not the, sol the problem solver. And if I am to use a snowplow parenting um, way of parenting, it really just gives my son no opportunity to solve the problems in his life. It makes him rely on me for everything and not be able to make decisions for himself when he's older and must always phone mommy to check up on me whether this is the right decision or not and quite honestly that would just annoy the living daylights out of me okay so i'm not i'm not about that life i am not about that life i'm not i always say we always say his father and i always say we're not raising a child we are raising an adult and i'm i think i read that from michelle obama's book becoming michelle obama and that always stuck with me because i think her parents used to say to her that they're not raising a child they're raising an adult and i want to raise my child to be a fully functioning adult that can make decisions for himself that can trust that he's made the right decision for himself that can have an opinion about things and not just keep quiet um for example at work if an authority figure is being disrespectful um a one that be a person or be an adult that can set boundaries and say to authority figures that i don't like how you're speaking to me i'm gonna need you to change the tone of your voice or i'm going to walk away from this conversation and i'll come back when you're ready to speak to me respectfully we were not taught that guys we weren't taught that if you have an opinion that I don't know sort of clashes with your parents opinion you are told that you are back chatting okay or nobody asks for your opinion oh we're not the same age why are you talking to me like we're the same age like yeah to end this video off i just want to say that um i'm so glad that this is the way that i'm choosing to parent my child i'm so glad and i'm also proud of myself for choosing to parent my child this way um a lot of people will turn and say oh they're gonna have a hard time dealing with the real world the real world doesn't care about their feelings blah 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 but this is not teaching them you know about the real world like i don't care about what the real world does um i want them to know that they're in a circle which is family and friends this is how they should be operating with respect with kindness with empathy um, with trust and that is the most important and when the the real world gets tough that they do have a safe space that is respectful, empathetic, trustworthy, all the things that I just listed that they can run to when the real world gets tough. That is, guys, I, I just blew my own mind. I just blew my own mind, okay? Revelations are coming to me while I'm filming this video. So I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of myself for reparenting myself, okay? I'm reparenting myself as I go on this journey. Have a child and all your childhood trauma is going to come back to you. You're going to realize how much childhood trauma you have. Um, well, I hope. I hope you realize the childhood trauma you have. And I hope that you have the courage to face it and not run away from it. And to deal with it and to heal from it. Because when you heal yourself, you heal generations. Okay? Generations. My ancestors are hugging me right now. Because they're like child we wish somebody would have treated us this way okay my ancestors are hugging me because i'm out here healing generational trauma okay but anyways i'm gonna end this video off here i was hoping that i would get into how i deal with tantrums and all of that but i think i'm gonna do a completely different and separate video on that thank you guys for watching um please do subscribe 
as I said, I do videos about motherhood, lifestyle, and fitness, and I really look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye.